Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, chronic daily migraine survivor, and founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation. I am here every week bringing you tidbits and tips and great information with Dr. Vincent Martin, MD. He is the director of the Head and Facial Pain Center at the University of Cincinnati, and he is also the president of the National Headache Foundation. Hello, Dr. Martin. How are you? I'm doing great. Good evening. Good evening. So today, the topic of our podcast is, why does the light bother me so much and what can I do about it? I don't think I've ever met a person with chronic headaches or chronic migraines who wasn't bothered by light in its various forms. So let's let's talk about, is light an actual trigger for our migraines and our headaches? Well, light is one of the most common triggers, but it's not a trigger for every person, just like any other trigger. Uh, Patients that have migraine with aura, which is where you get little flashing lights or zigzaggy lines that occur with the migraine, actually seem to be particularly prone to light as a trigger. Mm -hmm. And it's thought to be the how bright the light is that can trigger um, headaches. Um, It could be how it flashes, like for example, the strobe lights. I remember back when I was younger, there used to be like disco dancing and so forth. Those are the worst, yeah. Strobe lights and it would end up like triggering a headache and <sighs> myself um, and so forth. And then the glare of light can be a big a big issue. So mm-hmm. glare, um, like I, I think uh, when I was a kid, I had a migraine that was initiated by the bright sunlight hitting uh, the mirror of the car in front of me and it glared right into my eye and produced a migraine. Right. Or, or sunlight reflecting off of snow um, can also be a big trigger. So mm. light is a is a very common trigger for migraine. Okay. Yeah, I know that I personally wear sunglasses everywhere to the point where people make fun of me. So uh, I have this problem too. So can our screens that we stare at all day, our computer screens, our smartphone screens, um, are they bothersome to some people? Because I feel like I hear people bringing it up a lot. And why are they bothersome if they are? Well, they've done studies where they've looked at headache, not sp- specifically migraine, but the, you know, the presence or absence of headache in people with varying times of screen use. And what they found is that patients who use a, a screens more than three or four hours per day have a higher likelihood of having um, a headache. Right. And there could be multiple reasons for that. One is the brightness of the, of the screen, whether it be a computer screen or whether it be a, a cell phone screen can sometimes, sometimes trigger headaches. But in addition to that, the frequencies of light. So light, if you've ever, ever seen like a prism, you know, light can be broken down into different uh, components or different frequencies. So there's right. blue light and green light and yellow light and red light and so forth. And it's thought that the blue light in particular tends to be very, um, troublesome as a trigger for migraine, mm-hmm. whereas green light seems to be seems to be more favorable. So both the brightness of the light, the glare of the light, as well as the as the color of the light can be right. uh, important in triggering a headache with screen use. Right. So um, the next kind of light I wanted to talk about, because I, I know that the two things I hear the most, I think, are my computer screen is bothering me and triggering me, but I'm, even more than that, it's the fluorescent lights. If people work somewhere, somewhere with fluorescent lights, it's terrible for them. So what is so special about fluorescent light and why does it bother us so much? Well, it's interesting. So there's probably a different mechanism through which the fluorescent lights actually trigger migraines. Mm-hmm. It's thought to be probably the flickering of the light. So you may not realize it, but, but then a fluorescent light, there's a flicker frequency. So that's light slides flickering at a certain uh, frequency. And just that that flicker frequency can actually cause both headaches as well as eye strain. In -hmm. fact, they've done some studies in in work environments and found that that people were were, uh, had much more eye strain with with uh, with basically fluorescent lights. But I can tell you amongst my patients in particular, um, it's kind of ironic, but many doctors offices have fluorescent lights. Right. And so here I am seeing headache patients in my, my office and then we got these fluorescent lights up above and it's, it's driving the patients crazy. So it's a very common, you know, a, a finding for patients to be triggered by fluorescent lights. And it's probably the flicker frequency. Now, there are certain types 
of fluorescent lights that you can actually purchase with like a real high fre a flicker frequency. It's right. so high that the human eye can't even perceive it. Can't Those actually are more favorable than the ones that have lower frequ uh, flicker frequencies. So your employer theoretically could buy certain types of fluorescent lights that are better than others. Okay. So if you're someone who works under fluorescent lighting and with a computer screen all day, God bless you. Uh, but we'll be coming up later with some ideas for, for people to help them with these problems. But first, I just wanted to clarify, are migraine patients more sensitive to light in general than your average person? And is it only during an attack or is it all the time? What is that phenomenon all about? Well, there's a concept called photophobia. So photophobia just means kind of fear or aversion to light. And that's different than a trigger. So a trigger actually will, will actually initiate a migraine attack, but this is just the fact that light bothers you. Mm -hmm. So both during an attack, if you shine light in a migraine person's face, they're gonna perceive that as, as uncomfortable. But even outside of an attack, migraine patients will perceive that as uncomfortable. In fact, there have been studies where they've taken lights and just increased the intensity of the light in people, even when they don't have a migraine. Mm -hmm. And migraine patients will perceive uh, the light as, as uncomfortable to much lower intensity than normal people. So there's something about our perception of light that's different than other people, both during and, uh, and, and between an attack. Now, during an attack, that, that aversion to light is even greater yeah. than it would be in, in between attacks. So it's, it's a very fascinating phenomenon uh, that this happens in migraine patients. Right. I can, you can see that my face, as you talk, every time you say the word light, I go, yeah, I just, you know, hardly, I hardly even like talking about it because I've spent my entire life uh, hating it because of my migraines. So, so this is a great topic and I know everyone can relate to it, but let's talk about things we can do to minimize the effects of light on us, our chronic headaches, our migraines. There are um, a number of things that you can purchase or utilize. Um, I, there's glasses, there's screen covers. So can we talk about a couple of those? What are your, some of your favorite options? Well, the first option would be like, when you, when you talk about lights, in the, particularly in the workplace, but using incandescent bulbs mm -hmm. as opposed to um, fluorescent lights uh, would be helpful. Uh, avoiding LED lights, because those also have a flicker frequency um, as well. Right. If you're going to use computer screens a lot um, and glare is an issue, you could use glare guards. You can turn the intensity of light on the computer screen or your cell phone screen down. Right. Uh, to uh, address the color of, of lights in as, as terms of provoking headaches or, ma or making it more uncomfortable, you could actually purchase certain kinds of glasses. They're called migraine glasses, mm -hmm. and there are a variety of companies that sell those. And the NHF can't you know, specifically endorse any one company, but if you want to Google migraine glasses, um, you'll come up with a number of companies that purchase these glasses and they have something, a certain kind of tint called FL41. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're, you're gonna wanna have glasses with that because those, those will block out many of the noxious frequencies of light. Okay, um, so there's also, I believe there's apps you can download for your computer screen or your phone screen that sort of change the, the quality, the type of light and the time, based on the time of day, some of them even, and people sometimes find those helpful. So I wanted to throw that out there. There's a few of them. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. I've had some patients that have used those and, and found those to be very, very effective. I mean, let's face it, our screen time is not getting less as time no. goes seems to get be getting more and more. So learning how to deal with uh, this problem is essential to manage your migraines. Yes, and I worry about the kids with migraines because I think they they are more attracted to screen time than we are. I was, I'm always limiting my kids and their screen time. And so yeah, these things, these covers and these filters are great for kids or adults. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to add to our topic of lights and headache disorders? No, I just think it's important to be cognizant uh, that light can be a trigger and there are things and uh, measures you can take to minimize this uh, trigger and th therefore minimize your migraines. All right. Well, that's it for our topic of lights and migraines. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next week on Heads Up, the official weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation.